If you're having deja vu, there's a good reason for it. As you may remember, earlier this year we tested out a CX-5 against a RAV4 and the Mazda came out on top. Points were had on both sides, but ultimately driving dynamics was the key deciding factor and it gave the CX-5 the edge. Now, Toyota took issue with our comparison and understandably so. We'll admit that it was a bit of an apples to oranges face off. That's because the CX-5 model we had was all wheel drive, whereas the RAV4 was actually a front driver. And that's important because this year, the all new RAV4 has a fancy new all wheel drive system. And Toyota insisted that if we got a car so equipped that it would level the playing field. So we offered a rematch, one that would truly put the sporty characteristics of these cars to the test. And here we are, as absurd as it might seem, to drive these crossovers on the racetrack. So will Toyota regret issuing this challenge, or will the Toyota RAV4's new all-wheel drive system be the difference maker? <laughs> To recap, the 2013 RAV4 is powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder. It's a little less powerful than the Mazda. It makes 176 horsepower and 172 foot pounds of torque. Paired with a six speed automatic transmission, the car, as mentioned, is all wheel drive. It's rated at 22 miles per gallon in the city and 29 miles per gallon on the highway. And in real world testing, we got 26 miles per gallon. Pricing for this top of the line limited trim, including destination, is $29,255. Just like the RAV4, the CX-5 is powered by a two and a half liter engine. And like Column said, this one's a little bit more powerful. It makes 184 horsepower and 185 foot pounds of torque. Of course, this is an all wheel drive CX-5 and it uses a six speed automatic transmission. Combined, that offers 24 miles per gallon in the city or 30 on the highway, while in real world driving, we're finding that it combined gives 28 miles per gallon. Pricing for the top level Grand Touring trim starts at $29,865, including delivery. Of course, our fully loaded model costs $31,790. I have to say I'm quite impressed with the interior of the RAV4, especially in this limited trim we have here. Uh, there's nice leather all over the place. I really like the stitched leather on the dash and the buttons for the audio system and all the components on the dash look really premium. I do have a few complaints, however. The fake carbon fiber used on the dash and doors looks pretty cheesy, and worse than that, it actually scratches really easily. There's already a bunch of scratches on this car, and it's got about a thousand miles on it. On top of that, if you're a taller driver like myself, there's a bunch of buttons that you can't even see in here. They're located way down here, and they're the eco mode, that cool sport mode, plus the uh, heater controls for the seats. The limited trim gets luxuries like a power lift gate, tilt and telescopic leather steering wheel with controls. It gets soft text or fake leather seats, uh, front sport bolstered seats, an eight way power driver's seat with seat memory and power lumbar support, heated front seats overall, keyless access and a push button start. And as an added advantage, the RAV4 has superior cargo room at 38 cubic feet in the trunk, and that expands to 73 cubic feet when you fold the rear seats flat. And on top of all that, if you do have the seats up and passengers back there, it has more rear seat leg room. After the first time driving the CX-5, I have to admit I was very impressed. After all, Mazda's always done a good job of building straightforward, no-nonsense, high-quality cabins, and this is no exception. You know, you get leather seating in this car, but there's some things that it starts to seem like Mazda might have cut some corners on, and after having spent quite a bit of time in the car, they begin to stand out. Things like the plastic housing around the shift knob, for example, just don't quite feel as nice as they used to, and the slats on the air vents, you know, notice are thin and you can't actually close the air vents all the way. It's just sort of little things like that that start to stand out and that don't feel quite as nice as the RAV4. Other things like the fact that the cabin is mostly black begin to look a little bit bland next to the more fashion forward Toyota. 
Our car is equipped with the optional technology package, which adds items like adaptive HID headlights, uh, rain sensing wipers, heated mirrors, uh, power sunroof and push button start. You also get a power eight way adjustable driver's seat, a TomTom -tom based navigation, which by the way is very easy to use. It's a refreshing change from some of the more difficult systems out there. And you also get Mazda's city safe braking system. Realistically, both of these cars are very close and it'll come down more to personal taste because they're so next to each other in terms of equipment and it's just a question of whether you prefer the more black conservative style of this, the CX-5, or what Toyota has to offer. On the other hand, it, just, it would be nice if the Grand Touring trim in the CX-5 stood out a little bit more as the granddaddy of the product line. As mentioned, Toyota is pretty proud of its new all-wheel drive system and I'll tell you why. Like the CX-5, it's actually a front bias system and is designed to send power to the rear wheels when slip is detected. However, unlike the Mazda, it can actually send power to the rear uh, based on other factors as well. So if it detects uh, too many lateral Gs or enough steering angle is put in, it can actually be a proactive system, which is pretty nice. There's also a sport mode which will engage drive to the rear wheels the second the steering wheel is turned, giving up to 10% of the power to the rear wheels. Or if understeer is detected, it can actually deliver a full 50% of the power to the rear wheels. In all RAV4s, sport mode makes for higher RPM shifts, better throttle response, and more immediate steering. And that's something you really notice when you're driving this car on the street. And frankly, I'm impressed by this vehicle's sporty side. Driven on a closed course and pushing the car to its limits, you can actually feel the rear wheels working. You can actually feel that power being sent back there and the car actually pushing you through the corner. Unfortunately, the RAV4 has a big drawback and that is its tendency to understeer. Once you do throw this car into a corner, uh, regardless of the fact that you have all those systems turned off, the car really just wants to plow right through the corner. And sometimes it even feels like once the uh, all-wheel drive system's engaged and you've got that power coming from the rear end of the car, it actually feels like it's pushing you further offline. When it comes to the drive, the biggest drawback this car has has nothing to do with being on a racetrack. It's when you're driving around on normal streets, you feel how stiffly sprung the suspension really is. Now, it still feels like it's got a lot of movement to it here on a racetrack, but on the street, the back end of the car in particular is just really stiff. And when you go over some bumps, you just feel the rear end just slam down. There's big thuds and uh, it's just not a very comfortable driving car. So let's assume for a second that you decide to choose the CX-5 over the RAV4. That means that you get Mazda's torque splitting all-wheel drive system. And it's actually a less sophisticated system than you find in the RAV4. What makes it that way? Well, um, you can send power up to 50% of the torque, that is, to the rear wheels, but it won't do it unless it detects wheel slip. So on paper, you'd expect that, in fact, the RAV4 would be better. But really, this is more about how the two cars feel. And I gotta say, the CX-5 feels an awful lot better. So some of the standout features that make the CX-5 feel so much better are, you know, when you corner, it just feels more composed. It's less prone to body roll and it just doesn't understeer quite as much. I realize that you're probably never gonna be driving uh, a CX-5 or a RAV4 under these conditions, but you know, it really is in the extremes that you see what the car is all about. And you know, it's just coming out that the CX-5 really is a much more composed vehicle. And you know, when we're laying down lap times in any of these cars, we turn all the nannies off. And in this car, that means pushing the traction control off button. Even if you do that, you don't actually turn it off all the way. So if the car's computer decides, oops, you've lost your marbles and you're going a little bit too crazy, it'll actually still catch you. That might be a little bit of a disappointment to some drivers, but the truth of the matter is that you actually have a lot of room to play, which is a testament to the fact that Mazda really does try to build fun to drive vehicles. And even with a little bit of traction control there, you still have a lot of room to enjoy the car. The RAV4's new all-wheel drive system grants it decided advantages, but it still doesn't feel as sporty as the CX-5. So, Colin, was it actually any faster? Uh, no, it wasn't. Here at the Auto Guide Test Track, the best lap time we could pull off in the new RAV4 was a 136.65, and that's compared to a 135.1 in the CX-5. A clear one and a half second difference, despite the fact that the Toyota had some pretty clear advantages. All right, but hang on a second. Let's be honest. Nobody who's seriously considering one of these cars cares at all about lap times. What they care about is the fact that they're both competent entries in the compact crossover segment and they're affordable. 
Yeah, were it not for the uncomfortably stiff ride of the RAV4, it would probably be my recommendation. On the top limited trim, it's much nicer inside than the CX-5. Plus, it has both more passenger room and more cargo room. Fair enough, but we can't write the CX-5 off either. You know, it gets better mileage and it looks and drives like a car you'd want to be in every day. For more on this track shootout and others like it, visit autoguide.com.